Hey, K Crochet, this is for you. This is a request by K Crochet. Hey, Cotton Candy, 65, Peas in a Pod, Blazer. Hey, everybody, I hope everybody's having a good morning. This is pre recorded as usual to control background noise. Hey, say what? I'm just going to jump right into it. Summer Moon, Utah Wells was reported missing June 15th, 2021, just before 6.30 p.m. when her parents called in and advised that she had been missing for about 10 minutes. They've been looking for her and hollering for her and they couldn't find her. This was out of the 100 block of Ben Hill Road in the Beach Creek community of Hawkins County, Tennessee, with a rural Rogersville address. Okay, Summer was believed to have been barefoot and wearing a pink shirt and gray pants. She has blonde hair, which was shaved down to the skin within weeks of her disappearance, and it had grown out to just shorter than a pixie cut by the time she had disappeared. Blue eyes. She stands likely around three and a half to four feet tall by now and weighed 40 pounds at the time of her disappearance. She was also reported as only three feet tall, though um, we know she was likely closer to three and a half or four feet tall. Um, okay, if anybody has any credible information which could lead to locating Summer, 1 800 TBI find. This particular 911 call, um, in which Summer is calling out for Candace in the background. And Candace says what sounds to me like he's always trying to hurt Summer, referring to Don. It doesn't sound like the complete full call. It was placed, it was played um, on, it was put on YouTube by someone a long time ago. And I can't remember where I was when I heard it. I know there's got to be other people that remember where they heard it from, but I can't specifically remember. Um, so this recording that I have was posted very recently by Evil Exists on August 6th, 2023, this year, and it's titled, Oh My God, How Did I Miss This Call by Candace Bly? But I don't have the original audio. And I know people can find 911 calls. I'm sure you can pay for them. Um, I just haven't done that. So I think in my opinion, um, this sounds like Candace in the phone call. Um, and it sounds like a little three or four year old summer which is something, again, that I really wonder. I want to know how old Summer was in this call, when this 911 call was actually made by Candace. How old was Summer in this? I think it's important to note there is no reason why anyone should think that I am saying this is what is actually being said for sure in this 911 call, but to me, this is what the words sound like without any bias or prejudice towards anybody, just simply what words I hear coming from who sounds like a very intoxicated Candace Bly. And some people say they hear Don in the background, which I believe I do as well, and what sounds like Summer. So yes, it's concerning. Yes, I think there's a reason why Candace made this 911 call because she was in fear for Summer being hurt and I think probably herself too. I think the person she was afraid of and that was causing the potential and alleged harm was Don, Summer's dad, suspects in her disappearance, both of them. And in my opinion, Don is a prime suspect, but a definite suspect at that in his own daughter's disappearance. 
and they are all on this 911 call, and this should be concerning to anybody. And honestly, I really don't know why I haven't talked about it yet. This was a request from a subscriber, and uh, Kay Crochet, I'm glad you requested this, because you're right, I do think this is important to talk about. Then we have the order of protection, although it was dropped by Candace within a few days. Um, I don't forget about that. So <clears throat> if anybody knows, please let me know if you don't mind when this 911 call was made. I'm sure I could figure it out, but if anyone knows, just let me know. And people think CPS was involved in their lives because of a fraudulent claim. Not a whole lot of people think that, but enough people that it concerns me for the actual amount of interference that is trying to be had by certain people in this case, whether it's for their own benefit or something more nefarious. And I'm talking creators, I'm talking media managers, I don't know, maybe even PIs, I really don't know. Probably for their own selfish reasons, on their own agendas for themselves is why they're causing interference, but it worries me that there's creators, subscribers, Facebookers, tweeters, people all over the internet really believing a false narrative that's being put out essentially by suspects and their spokesmen. And some people really are ignoring the harsh realities and the cold hard facts that are right in front of them in my truly honest opinion. And it's an injustice to Summer Moon. Now, without further ado, this is my opinion. Hear it for yourself again, if you have already heard it, before you hear what I think is said. Then I will jump in to what I hear. So let's listen to the 911 call first, because I want you to hear it for yourself. And obviously, for copyright reasons, I will have to interrupt it and talk here and there, but still, nevertheless. I have no idea what she says right there. I will play it one more time. The only thing I could come up with is she's saying something about blood. Not sure. And by the way, trigger warning on this. I should have said that in the very beginning, but yes, please, trigger warning. There's This is disturbing to me and probably to a lot of other people too. Now, this is the part where people think that they hear Summer saying, Mommy, Mom, help me. And to me, honestly, it does sound like that's what she's saying. And it does sound like Summer. She doesn't sound like she can be any older than three or four. I'm not sure when this um, 911 call was made. Language warning here, but she's saying something about something being fucked up as Summer's still hollering for her mommy to help her in the background. And it just blows my mind that people can hear these things come straight out of Summer's mouth herself 
and can hear the distress in the atmosphere. I mean, you can literally sense the distress from this call out of that household. And it's not just this call, there's several. And people are completely sweeping these things under the rug and saying, but they seem so genuine. Don and Candace seem like such good parents. But did you ever know them as parents? Did you ever know them before? Were you ever in that home with them? And if you were, I would love to hear your opinion. I don't know if she's saying Donnie. It's so unfair. It's kind of hard to understand right there. Let me know what you think. I'll rewind it and play it one more time. She might be saying why it's so unfair. I'm not really sure. She sounds very intoxicated. Now, right there, you cannot tell me that it doesn't sound like she says he's always trying to hurt Summer. And I would love to know when the date on this was because I want to know how also for another reason why I want to know is because I want to know how close it was to when she filed that order of protection. When she was in fear for Summer being hurt by Don and all of her children and herself and her mom. She thought Don was going to hurt all of them. Probably has. And this is where people are saying they can hear Don in the background too. Sounds like Don in the background's like, really? Okay, he just hurt your daughter. I've been following. All right, now we're going to read through it. What I thought I heard. This is what it sounded like to me, okay? All right. 911 is called. The dis dispatcher answers. And Candace is inaudible at first, but it sounds like she's saying something about seeing blood, in my opinion. The 911 operator says, do what? And Candace says, it hurts bad. The operator asks Candace if she needs an ambulance, and Candace says, no, I don't need an ambulance. I don't think. I think I just fucked up my head. And Candace sounds really intoxicated, and it's hard to understand her. The operator calmly says, okay. Then Summer can be heard yelling, mommy, mom, help me, help me, in the background. And it does sound like Summer says, help me. But it's not clear as a bell to me. Candace then says something that sounds like, what, baby? Come here, baby. Come over here. Then it sounds like Candace is crying out loud while saying, Donnie, or something. It's so unfair. He's always trying to hurt Summer. That was pretty clear. There's a short pause. Then Candace says, your daughter. It sounds like Candace says, it's right here probably talking to someone in the background at her house. And then the operator asks, 
is anybody there? And Candace can be heard saying, go watch your sister. And it sounds like a male voice says, no shit or oh shit, which I assume was Don. It's kind of muffled and it sounds distant. Um, it sounds like a male voice, probably Don, says, what are you doing with that? Or why'd you do that? I think Candace says, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? And she sounds kind of scared and distraught a little bit. Candace asks the 911 operator, ma'am, are you still there? And she says, yeah, I am. What's going on? Are you there? And Candace says, he hurt my daughter. And the 911 operator says, okay, he hurt your daughter. It also sounds like Candace could be saying he took my daughter, but I don't think so. I'm pretty sure she says he hurt my daughter. But the operator says, okay, he hurt your daughter, in my opinion. That's what it sounds like is being said. And during the time in which they are saying that you can hear Don in the background, which I believe is Don as well, it sounds like they're having a little bit of an argument. And maybe there's someone else in the background, maybe grandma, I'm not really sure. It's hard to tell, but it does sound like things are uneasy in the background, in my opinion. So that's not the only 911 call. I'm sure you've all um, realized by now that there's been several 911 calls made to, from, about concerning Don Wells, Candace Bly, 110 Ben Hill. Since Summer's been missing and before she went missing while the children were in the home. So assuming the male voice that was on the line in this call that could be heard in the background was Don. And obviously Candace was the one that called 911. This call that it doesn't even sound like Candace to me, honestly, because she sounds so intoxicated that it's changed the way her entire voice sounds. I know this from witnessing it over the past couple of years on YouTube because Candace still gets like that. You hear her like that more often than not, it seems. I think Candace really was saying Don was hurting Summer and she was probably hurt by Don too. And that's my opinion, and I'm sticking to it because I don't see how this call could really be taken any other way. And I don't see even Candace being that bold to call 911 and say Don was hurting Summer just to get him in trouble because her feelings were hurt. Where was CPS on this one? When was this call actually made? I know there's people that know when the call was made. Then there's also, I'm going to jump into another one because just to save time here, there's the September 26, 2020 call that Allison Harris made concerning Candace and her children up at 110. The phone with um, Kingsport City Police Department. Mm -hmm. I have an issue at hand. I've been staying at a friend of mine's house for a little over a week. So she was staying at a friend of hers house, being Candace and Don's, for a little over a week at the time of this call. week now and my I have my one daughter home with me back in the city of Kingsport. Right now we're sitting at Daughter General off of Lone Star Road. And uh my oldest two children are up at the at my friend's house. Her oldest two children are up at Candace's house and she refers to Candace as her ex friend. Two nine one one. Like something obviously really bad happened and if this was a during the time that jose was allegedly there was she staying there when he was staying there and why doesn't anybody want to talk about that and the reason why they're still up there is because when i went to leave this morning for work because there was a confrontation last night between us all and then this morning when she woke up she was very confront confrontational about the whole situation so 
I had to wait until her mom got away. Okay. Okay. So why would she have to wait until grandma got away to bring her to work? way so that work so if she has to wait for grandma to get away she's saying that grandma took her to work because she's waiting for grandma to be able to get away so that grandma could take Allie to work and maybe Allie didn't want Candace to know grandma was taking her to work or what because this part kind of confuses me the whole situation so I had to wait until her mom got away to bring me to work and she said, and she basically threatened me, threatened anyone who came up to the house, she would blow their heads off. She was very comfort, confrontational about the whole situation. But when I went to leave this morning for work, because there was a confrontation last night between us all. And so she's saying because when she went to leave this morning for work, well, and then she backs up and she's like, well, first of all, there was a confrontation between us all. So who was us all? Because if Don was in Utah at this time and Jose was there, then she would mean her, Jose, Candace, whoever else was there. What was the confrontation? Because it seemed like Allie and Jose were pretty close in pictures that I saw. They were like messing around on the bed like wrestling or something in a picture that I saw and he says him and Candace it wasn't like that and then this morning when she woke up she was very confront confrontational about the whole situation so I had to wait until her mom got away to bring me to work and she said and she basically threatened me threatened anyone who came up to the house she would blow their heads off She's bipolar. She's very, very. Okay. So I guess Candace was threatening Allie and whoever else was saying they were going to go up there and try and get Allie's kids, which was probably, I'm assuming, Allie's mom or grandma. And I guess Candace was threatening to blow their heads off, like probably in the same way that Allie says, or was it Leslie that said she was threatening to blow up Walmart? What's with Candace threatening to blow everything up? You know, I kind of have a hard time believing anything that Allie says. I'm not going to lie because she lied about some things that she was doing on the day that Summer disappeared. And that's a huge deal. Even if it seemed like some small and significant details, it just makes it hard to believe anything that she says now. So when even when she says, no matter how I feel about Candace, no matter how anybody feels about Candace, it still makes me think, well, is she even, is she maybe exaggerating? Is she even being honest? Because she's already lied about other stuff. So how do I know she's being honest about this? But at the same time, she was obviously scared to go up there and get her kids or she just would have went up there and got her kids. She wouldn't have fooled around with calling 911. And her family was obviously scared too, even if they all rolled up there together. Candace threatened to blow their heads off. So they were scared to go up there and they called 911. So this I do kind of believe. I'm just saying most of the stuff that Allie says, I have a hard time believing. This one, this one might actually be true because she actually went through with calling 911 to help her because she was obviously scared. Don wasn't there, right? He was in Utah at this time. So what she thought, Jose was going to do something to her? I don't think so. I think the one she was scared of was Candace. Okay, so what are okay. you getting from us? I need someone to go up to her house and get my two children. Okay, does she have any, like, in their split custody or is there anything like that? No, no, no they're, they're fully mine. Where are they at? They're at 110 Ben Hill Road. Rogers Road is put off of our Beach Street, 10 and 15. Right now? And that's fine because I spoke to her mother earlier when she was on the way to the city to drop my youngest daughter off. And, uh, okay, I said, you... 
So she's pretty inaudible right there, but she's just saying like she did something, gave somebody time, but something didn't work out. And the dispatcher's like, okay, you're giving me like details that I don't really need. I just need to know where your kids are right now. She cuts her off a couple times. What Dollar General are you at? It's the one right before the one side road. Okay. Outside of King's Park. Is it like outside of King's Park? It's the one right before the one side road. Please support it. Yes, no, no, no. So then basically they're just they're just going through with what she's going to help her out with now. There's no more anything about the kids. So I think it's interesting that um it seems to me like if the kids wanted to leave, why wouldn't they just leave? If it was just Candace and Jose there and the boys and Summer and Allie's two oldest children, well, who would be stopping them from just leaving? If they knew their mom wanted them to leave and was desperately trying to get them to leave the hill at 110, then why wouldn't they just go with her? You know what I'm saying? Like, what was stopping them? But obviously she felt the need to call 911 because she couldn't go up there and get them. Did they not want to go with her? And why would that be? Like, what was going on up there that was keeping them there? Or what was going on at home that they didn't want to go home to? It just makes you wonder. Units responding to the domestic. We've got a All right, so this is on Jonathan Lee Rich's channel. Um, he posted it January 24th, 2022, and it's titled Don and Candace Bly, January 19th, 2022, 911 called dispatch, Summerwell's case. And this was the one that Grandma called, and it was in, uh, it was in reference to the n open 911 line that Grandma called. Because obviously she was worried about what was going on. Maybe she was scared for herself. I don't know. She could have been afraid for herself and Candace. Got all back on the phone. Maybe called 911 again. Still an open line. Can hear them arguing in the background. So even though when they got there, Candace said whatever was going on, whatever happened, happened a couple hours before the police got there. But the police said or the dispatch said they could hear them arguing in the background when they got the call. So they were still arguing. So it must have been escalated to the point where it was more than just arguing, to the point where it was probably physical. And then it de-escalated down to them just arguing. And Candace was like, you know, but before they came was when everything was going down. But to them, they were just arguing like, there wasn't a problem, even though to most people arguing and bickering like that, and God only knows what they were saying and what they heard, usually typically isn't like a normal thing for families to have to deal with every day. Now, I don't know if this was an everyday thing, but it does seem like it was a common occurrence in their life. Just because of the fact that it got to the point where 911 was called, order of protections were filed. Things we've heard and seen in the past couple of years makes me feel like there was a lot of turbulence in the home. So Dawn being in the basement and Candace being upstairs, and they're hollering and arguing at each other. Still, I wonder if that was normal. I wonder if Dawn normally escaped down to the basement and Candace would just stay upstairs. Also, he's downstairs and 
he's unaware that she's called. So, yeah, there was that also. I'm sure it got to the point where a call should have been made several times when a call wasn't made. It probably took something very drastic for 911 to be called, in my opinion. So this particular 911 call that we just listened to, um, it was obviously it was made after Summer was reported missing by Grandma. Um, <clears throat> it's actually there's a um, I have a link to an Evil Exists video of dispatch, and they're saying it's actually the complainant's mother that called. She said she got a text from her saying that her husband was drunk and was being mean to her and yelling and cussing at her. So if you want to hear it verbatim. The complainant is actually going to be her mother. She said that she got a text from her that her husband was drunk. So apparently Don was drunk, which probably happened all the time. And Candace was upset to the point where she was texting her mom complaining about it. And grandma probably saw fighting, heard fighting, whatever. And she probably got scared because it was probably bad. It's probably something that she was used to, but it was probably really bad at the time. So she called 911. Matter and yellow matter. So that video was titled um, Candace Bly sent Grandis a text about Don. Grandis called 911 and it was posted January 25th of 2022. So it's concerning to a lot of people that. There are so many people rallying behind Don and Candace, wanting them to have their children back in that home as if there wasn't a domestic issue going on in that home. I don't understand how people can just ignore that. That's very unfortunate. It should never happen, but unfortunately it does. And people aren't always honest about it. Most people probably do lie about it their whole lives or just live in denial when it comes to domestic violence. There's no good reason why there should be any children in that home with all of these things going on. I know the boys were not there during this 2022 911 call that was made. Summer obviously was already missing, but it's the point that people are wanting the boys to go back home when it's clearly not a healthy environment for them to be living in. And even the state will agree. And it's a shame, really. The children um, were, however, there for multiple other 911 calls, including the 911 call that was made when Summer was reported missing. Summer might not have been there for that one, but she was there for at least a few, I'm sure. It's really sad. I see how many calls were made to the Montgomery home in Harmony Montgomery's case and homes and other cases after it's too late. And it's so sad that some of these children's disappearances could have been prevented had the caseworker really seen the danger before it was too late. So this was aired on WJHL in regards to the open 911 line and domestic violence claims by Candace against Don filed last week with the Hawkins County Sheriff's Office. The report shows officers were called to the Wells residence around 12.30 a.m. January 19th. Candace Bly allegedly told officers that she and Don Wells had been drinking alcohol and that he hit her, grabbed her by the throat, and pushed her against a wall. Does anybody think that Candace was, like, lying about that? Or is anybody doubting that? Because... I don't see how everybody could be so supportive and so for both Don and Candace at all times 
and support their relationship and act like everything's so hunky dory when um everybody's just sweeping all these things under the rug. And it's not like this was 20 years ago. This wasn't that long ago. And it seems like it's still, I mean, Candace had a black eye not that long ago. What was that really from, you know? Is that any of my business? No, not really, but I'm still going to talk about it because they're suspects in Summer's disappearance and Summer's their daughter and they're still together and they're still out here pushing a false narrative and they're still trying to shut everybody up from asking pertinent questions. And there's people supporting that. When there's actual cold, hard facts, like things like this, to prove that it's not what they think it is, in my opinion. They're painting this beautiful picture of Don and Candace as this perfect family. They were just this good country family that liked to go play in the dirt and enjoy nature and went and did all these things and dress nice and, you know, because Summer would wear dresses and wear hair bows and, every, and Candace used to have longer hair and take the kids out and do things and take pictures so everybody has it in their head not everybody some people have it in their head that they were just this happy country family I don't think that was the case I see it totally different and things like this definitely stand out and I can't just sweep them under the rug paired with the order of protection that she got eight months before summer was reported missing and the fact that they didn't follow through on their case plan to get their children back that they lost after Summer came up missing. And then they turn around and say CPS kidnapped them and they have a spokesman slash media manager that's going around pushing their narrative, which is different in law enforcement, and saying that same thing about CPS. That they need the system so broken and that's why Don and Candace lost their children, not because of what they did. What else are they trying to cover up? Because clearly it wasn't a happy-go-lucky situation. These kind of things don't just occur regularly. If you're a happy-go-lucky family, that's just the truth. The report shows a different story from Wells, who claimed Bly had been drinking before he got home that night. He allegedly told police that while he and Bly did argue, he didn't touch her. The report states officers did not see any markings on Bly's neck. Neither parties were arrested, and both were referred to private prosecution. Okay, so there wasn't marks on her neck. Doesn't mean that nothing happened um, at all. Definitely things happen all the time, and marks don't get left. Um, she did say that she jammed her thumb or that she thought it was broken. And first responders that came to check her out did say that it appeared to be jammed. So, I mean, that should have stood for something, in my opinion. And if uh, Don's putting his hands on Candace and then doing things like punching himself in the face to make himself look like the victim and then trying to run off. I think that says everything I need to know about what kind of person Don is. but. Hey, I could be wrong. And then according to a domestic report from the Hawkins County Sheriff's Office, officers were called to the Wells house at 1230 in the morning on January 19th, 2022. But when officers arrived to 110 Ben Hill, Candace claimed Don grabbed her by the neck and pushed her up against the wall earlier that night. So would there necessarily be marks? I mean, if you're just getting grabbed and pushed around, does that mean you have to leave a mark for it to be wrong? Even though there wasn't clear marks, Candace's th thumb, they said, did appear to be jammed. And I mean, somebody did call 911 because obviously they thought it was an emergency and needed help. So, <clears throat> There was arguing that could be heard in the background of an open 911 line when the 911 call was received. Nobody ever actually said anything to dispatch. Candace told officers when they arrived that 
Don hit her, grabbed her by the throat, pushed her up against the wall, and she also told officers she thought her thumb was broken because she hit it on the washer when she was in a struggle with Don. Are people really in support of this behavior? If not, then why are people entertaining it and acting like it's not a big deal and minimalizing domestic violence? And if Don is the one doing it and Candace is the one receiving it, then it keeps happening and it's been happening, it's still happening. Why are people wanting them to remain in a toxic relationship together? If people are really their friends, in my opinion, they would be like, maybe you guys should like take some time apart and get your shit together. And then like maybe you can come back together after you have your shit together. But I don't really see that happening from either one of them because they seem comfortable in misery. Like, it it just seems like that's where they want to be in their lives. And it's really sad because their children have to suffer because of that. It's not fair to them. Don said Candace was already drinking when he got home from work probably normal. Apparently Don waited until he got home to start drinking, which who knows? He probably was drinking at work. I'm just kidding. I don't know. First responder said Candace's thumb appeared to be stubbed but not broken. Candace said it happened two or three hours before the 911 call was made. Police say Candace was using her thumb fine, flicking her cigarette and putting her shoes on with both of her hands, which appeared to be normally functioning. There were reportedly no obvious injuries and there was no identified primary aggressor to this domestic disturbance and nobody was charged with anything, nor were Don and Candace in any way separated for the night for each of their own safety. And I get laws are laws for a reason. And the law enforcement is there to enforce those set laws. They can't overstep their boundaries. And I understand that and I respect that. But I think when it comes to situations like this, there should be a little bit more assistance for people who are, especially when a 911 call has been made. Um. That's, I mean, that's literally a call for help. And you get there and you see what the problem is, but technically I can't do anything because technically this and that, but you could literally be saving someone's life. So maybe you should just technically overlook a couple things and just do what you can to at least encourage them to separate for the night as much as you can, because that's never okay. No matter what you think about somebody, that's never okay. Okay, well, that was really all I had for, um, this was something that I think was very important to talk about, and I'm glad we did, and I appreciate Kay Crochet for requesting that we talk about this. Appreciate everybody for always being here for Summer and talk about her, to stick up for her. I hope everybody has a nice day. We're not going anywhere. We're going to see this through until Summer is found and gets justice. And nobody can shut us up. All right. Love you guys. Have a nice day.